a, a force as, as an initial stimulus. And a force uh, requires, uh, in the motion department, it requires acceleration. If one is moving at constant velocity, there is no force, right? Force equals mass times acceleration. So we need a force and we need acceleration. So the only thing that the vestibular system responds to is acceleration. If you're going, can, if you're just going and you're going at a constant velocity, you're traveling in a car, let's say, it's a completely smooth ride. There are no bumps in the, uh, in the road and the suspension is perfect. There is no vestibular stimulation at all. And that's, that's actually the case when you're uh, going, if you're ever in an airplane at constant cruising velocity, uh, no air pockets, you don't feel as though you're moving, okay? So you have no sense of moving. There's no acceleration. Now, we need an acceleration, but acceleration comes in two varieties. One is angular acceleration, and that means a rotation. So the easiest way to think about this is rotating the head. All right, so if I rotate the head, if I rotate the head in any plane, that is an angular acceleration onto my head. The other one is linear acceleration. We mentioned it already because that's what gravity is. Gravity is one linear vector coming down going down into the earth. We have other linear accelerations, which is, so if we move to the side, that is a translation. Those are, that's a linear acceleration. So let's imagine that we're in a car and we uh, accelerate. So as you go from zero to 60, you're accelerating. Once you get to 60 miles per hour and you stay constant, there's no vestibular st stimulation. Okay, in the world of no potholes. Um, uh, uh, and then the only time, so the vestibular stimulus is during acceleration and deceleration, but not during constant velocity. All right? So there are two parts to the uh, vestibular system, one that responds to angular rotation, angular acceleration, and one that responds to linear accelerations. The semicircular canals are used to respond to angular accelerations and the uh, otoconial organs, the sacculus and utriculus, are used to respond to linear uh, acceleration. And the linear acceleration includes gravity, which means that as I stand here and I am still, my head's not moving, if I tilt my head or even if I keep it upright, that's a vestibular stimulus because gravity is a constant force. Gravity is constant acceleration producing a constant force. So this, we can have information about static tilt because gravity is always there. We can also have information about linear translation, but in angular, we do not have information about, for example, angular tilt. That information does not come in through the vestibular system there's no rotational, uh, resting rotational force to give us that information. So what happens if there's a, a problem with either of these two systems? So as I said, the angular acceleration is detected by the semicircular canals. A, a, a dysfunction in detecting angular acceleration will result in a sense of vertigo. And vertigo simply means that you, one has the sense that either the environment is spinning or that the self is spinning within the a stationary environment. So that is the deficit in angular acceleration. The deficit in uh, linear acceleration is a feeling of being out of balance, a feeling that even as one is, is sitting even, that the, uh, uh, that the information you're getting from gravity operating on the head is is not right, it's not usual, it's off. And so one feels out of balance even as one's steady standing or sitting. Um, and that makes uh, life very difficult indeed. Now a common way that people describe vestibular dysfunction is dizzy. I feel dizzy. Dizzy is a really nonspecific uh, term. 
And so if you hear somebody, if a patient comes to you and says, I feel dizzy, you want, in, you want to interrogate that. You want to find out the most likely thing is they feel lightheaded and they have a cardiac issue. They're somehow not, they don't have enough blood volume, they, they're, they're just lightheaded. That's not necessarily and probably not, in fact, a neural issue. On the other hand, a vestibular issue will be described in terms of either vertigo or disequilibrium. They won't use those terms, but they'll describe that, those feelings. And so dizziness is a, is a, uh, is a word that you want to you wanna find out more about if, if somebody uses that with you. Now, in contrast to hearing, you know, what we saw with hearing is that there was, there was nothing that could happen between the cochlear nucleus and the primary auditory cortex that would impact hearing. And that's totally not true in the vestibular system. So uh, the processing of vestibular information in the brainstem and even in the thalamus, but particularly in the brainstem and including the cerebellum, is, uh, is hugely complicated and is, is, lesions in a large number of places can produce vestibular dysfunction. So vestibular dysfunction is, um, is frequent. It happens a lot. It can happen because of peripheral reasons. It can happen because of central reason, reasons. The, once you find this out, hopefully you're in a situation where you can send somebody to a specialist but you want to try and do what you can to narrow down whether you're looking at a central or a peripheral problem. And that's what we'll try and do here. Um, try to understand enough that we can at least make that kind of uh, best guess uh, judgment call. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start again in the periphery. We're going to start at the inner ear um, in our treatment of the vestibular system. Mm -hmm.